Hello, what is going on guys? Spoons here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to get a versatile and functioning emulator for your iOS device. Now the emulator that I'll be using is called RetroArch, but before we get into how to set it up and install it, you're going to need two applications, one of them being Unlim Downloads and the other being iFile. Now Unlim Downloads is a free application in the App Store, you can find the link in the description. And the reason that we're using this is because Safari Download Manager has not been updated yet for iOS 7 and this is just a free application that allows us to download some files and the other application that we'll be using is called iFile now I'm sure that you guys know what this is it is four dollars from the big boss repo and it's essentially a finder for iOS and we're gonna use it to move some files around next you are going to want to open up Cydia and add this source which is themaster.net slash Cydia I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can see it much easier and this will contain one package and it is RetroArch which is the beautiful emulator that we'll be using and now it's time to download some ROM so you're gonna wanna open up Unlim Downloads and navigate to coolrom.com I'll put a link in the description below so that it's easier for you guys I also must remind you that to download a ROM legally you actually have to own a copy of the game um, now you're gonna go to ROM files and if you want to see a list of supported systems for RetroArch you can find it in the description below I'm just gonna go to Game Boy Advance and download some Pokemon Leaf Green just as an example and you're gonna want to scroll down and click download now and just click the word download and then go to the download section of Unlim downloads you'll see it downloads relatively quickly and you're gonna to want to unzip the file once it's done downloading some emulators can actually read zip files some of them can't if you want to find a list of what can read what there's text instructions you can find below and once that's done, you're going to want to open up iFile, and I'll put the paths for everything below, but I'll explain them right here. You're going to want to go to VAR, and then you're going to want to go to Mobile, and then to the Documents folder. And after you reach the Documents folder, you're going to want to make a folder called ROMs. This is essential for this whole process to work, so please make that folder. You can also make some uh, category folders uh, within that folder of ROMs. You don't have to, though. Um, and if you don't know how to add a folder, all you have to do is click Edit, Add, and then the name of the folder and click Done. Um, but we're going to go into the ROMs folder and Game Boy Advance, and as you can see, there are no ROMs in there right now. Next, we're going to go back right here and actually make sure that I have hidden files turned on. This is essential for this process to work as well, so make sure you have hidden files turned on. And now we're going to go into VAR Mobile Applications, and we're going to scroll down until we see Unlim DL, which is Unlim Downloads, which is the app that we download the ROM in. And once we find it, you can tap on it, and you can go into Documents. These This will hold all of the... Uh, contents which you downloaded using the um, the app and you see Pokemon Leaf Green GBA right there we're gonna copy that and go back and you guys can probably guess what we're gonna do but we're gonna go into documents like we were before go into ROMs go into the GBA folder and then we are going to paste that ROM into the GBA folder and now we get to open up RetroArch and start playing our games. This is the moment that everyone has been waiting for. We're going to tap on Load Content, and you'll see that we are in the Documents folder we were just in. Tap on the ROMs folder, the GBA folder, and then Pokemon Leaf Green, and tap on VBA Next as the core. And as you can see, the ROM did load. However, we have a Nintendo 64 button overlay. So to change this, you're going to tap on the button in the top center, which is sort of looks like a bug from Space Invaders. And we're going to go down to Settings. And then we are going to go to Input Options. And then the Overlay Preset, we're going to tap A on that. And we're going to switch it to GBA and GBA.CFG. And this time, uh, when we go back, after tapping that bug button, once again, it's kind of hard to hit. Um, you can see that our button overlay has switched, and this is exactly what the Game Boy Advance overlay is. Now, if you are trying to run a PlayStation ROM, you're actually going to have to download one more thing, and this is a BIOS file, a bin file, and it is called uh, SCPH1001. 
And as you're typing in, you'll actually see that um, there are uh, related searches that say PSX BIOS. That's exactly what you want. And I just tapped on the first link here and I downloaded this. This is actually a file straight from Sony. Um, so this is essential if you want to play PlayStation ROMs using RetroArch or pretty much using any PlayStation emulator for iOS. And you can see it downloaded very quickly. It actually downloaded as a zip file, so you're going to want to unzip it just like we did before. And now we can close Unlim Downloads, and we're going to do a similar process, but we're going to actually uh, paste the bin file in a different folder um, than in uh, you know, the ROMs folder. So uh, you're going to want to go to Applications and go down to Unlim Downloads just like we did before. Go to Documents, and we're going to grab this file um, right from our Unlim Downloads uh, documents. So we're going to copy that over and uh, we're going to go back. We're going to go back one more time and you have to make sure you have hidden files on for this just like I said before and you will see a .retroarch app and you're going to want to paste that file right into this application right here. Um, and you're also going to want to rename it because uh, iOS is case sensitive when it comes to these files so you're actually going to want to not have it as capital letters. You're going to do lowercase s, lowercase c, lowercase p, and lowercase h 1001.bin and it should work like a charm from right there. So that's just if you uh, want to run some PlayStation ROMs you have to do that process uh, before you start playing them. And just as a quick note I'm going to show you two ways right now to change your button overlay. One of them being before you play and one of them during. Uh, you can go to front end before you play, go to global core config, and you can go to input overlay, and you can change the input overlay before you load a ROM. As you can see, you can see all the systems right here that uh, RetroArch supports. So I'm going to pick uh, PSX, which is PlayStation, and I'm going to load that button overlay. You actually don't even have to be playing a PlayStation ROM in order to uh, have this button overlay work. So as you can see, I'm loading Super Smash Brothers for the N64. And as you can see, I have a PlayStation overlay while I'm playing an N64 game. Doesn't really make sense, but uh, you can still do it. And uh, you can tap the bug button like I showed you before, and you can go down to settings, and you can actually um, go in on the fly while you're playing the game. You go to settings, input options, overlay preset, and you can change the preset just like we did before. Um, so let's go to N64 because this would make sense and as you can see the button layout updates right on the fly just like that. So thank you for watching guys. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you're looking for text instructions, maybe the video uh, wasn't clear enough for you. Uh, there's a link to some very thorough and good text instructions for this process. So you can find that in the description below. Uh, also, if you're wondering how to connect an external controller such as a Wiimote or a PS3 controller, um, BT Stack, which is a package you can install from Cydia, uh, it has not yet been updated uh, to iOS 7, so we can not yet uh, attach external controllers to RetroArch. Uh, however, once BT Stack is updated and I can confirm that it's functioning, uh, I will make an update video on how to use external controllers for RetroArch. Uh, but thank you for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, um, you can message me on Kick, which is an application sort of like texting. My name on there is the Red Chimp. You can find it in the description below. You can also follow me on Twitter, ask me questions there, or you can just leave a comment below. But I do, really do appreciate it. Thank you for watching, guys. Please subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.